Is liberty dying where you live? Escape to Keen at freekeen.com. Next match for the board is Steve Hanford versus Richard Paul. Uh, if I could ask the council and you guys meant to identify yourselves for the record. John Webb for the state. Jason Smith for probation. Matthew Hill for the defender. Thank you. Um, it's my understanding from some uh, motions that have been filed that uh, the state is moving to amend the uh, violation of probation. And uh, in response to that, to that motion, the defense filed an objection to the amendment and argued in the alternative that if the court was going to permit the amendment, that the defense was going to be asking for a continuance on the scheduled uh, probation violation hearing today. Uh, and and uh, am I correct in, in summarizing the positions of the parties? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, previously indicated to counsel that uh, that in light of that, uh, I'm, I'm going to grant the state's uh, request to amend the charge, but I'm also going to grant the defense's request to continue the, the violation of probation hearing in, in this matter. Uh, I mentioned to counsel that uh, the potential date available to them, we'll, we'll take up the issue of bail in, in a moment, but a potential date to have a, a full hearing on the probation violation would be uh, July 24th. I don't know whether counsel uh, are have have been able to confirm whether they're available. I just want to be available that day. State uh, is available. I'm available. Not was. Yes. EPO is available. And, and and in looking at the court calendar, uh, we could do it in the morning. We could do it in the afternoon. Uh, I, I don't know how long uh, counsel anticipate for for a hearing, but uh, I think there's just short motions hearing on in the morning uh, at 9 o'clock. I'm happy to do it uh, in the morning or the afternoon, whatever works with counsel. Your, your Honor, I, mean, I defer to the court. I, I can be available either time. I will say that I, I think it is best for us to uh, hold a fairly substantial chunk of time for the hearing. So, and, and, and in light of that, perhaps it would be better to start uh, in the morning uh, in, case, in case it takes a little bit longer than, than uh, most probation violation hearings do take. So, so we'll set it for nine o'clock on, on the 24th of July. Uh, and, and now we have uh, have the issue of that. Uh, I, I take it uh, because I see some equipment being set up that the parties were not able to reach uh, a, a resolution on the issue of that. We were not one. Um, and if I, if I may, the, it's my belief that Mr. Webb intends to uh, play the, the 11, 12 minute video in its entirety. Uh, I, had, uh, I have a, a sh shorter portion of it. And that is a three minute portion that I believe shows all of the relevant uh, conduct as far as what is described in the, in the violations. I have suggested to Mr. Webb that that be sufficient. Uh, I believe he has a different position. I, I think that I, I uh, would stand on an objection uh, a foundational objection to this being used uh, as any uh, evidence against him regarding a substantive violation. I, I understand that uh, he's trying to present this today only for the purposes of the bail hearing. And we're doing that without objection, is that right? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'd like to see him, but I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> That's a pretty forceful statement. Uh, uh, in, in light of that, uh, Again, it doesn't doesn't much matter uh, to me um, whether whether I'm certainly willing to take the additional time. I take it your your primary objection to the additional time is that there's information that, that that's not terribly relevant uh, from the defense perspective. But does the defense object to showing the, the entire uh, the entire 11 minutes of the video? Yes, sir. Sure. I think that the first three minutes is sufficient to uh, address any concern there may or may not be about uh, some risk to the community or Mr. Paul himself. What, why does the state believe it's important to show the whole video? Mm. The, um, toward the end of the video, there's some conversation going on in which the defendant uh, talks about calling other people and getting them to come down to Central Square. Um, so the state believes that conversation on the part of the defendant is pertinent to the issue of bail. Uh, there is a lot of dead times, uh, 
I'll call it in the video in between where there's nothing exciting going on. Um, so uh, I understand where the defense is coming from in that regard, but there is just a bit at the end where the defendant is talking about calling and getting people to come down to Central Square. Uh, which is, you know, state doesn't mean to suggest that it's illegal to be in Central Square, but in light of what had just happened, the confrontation between these two groups, um, uh, you know, the state thinks it's indicative or at least relevant for, for bail purposes. Um, and, and the state recognizes that the conduct of the other parties was, you know, uh, egregious uh, or uncalled for. So the state recognizes that fact. But it, it's the stirring up of this whole thing that the state argues um, is pertinent to this bail hearing, the safety of both, both the safety of the defendant and the safety of the community is called into play, the state would argue. Um, so I would like to play the whole thing. There will be some, we're all going to be twiddling our thumbs in between for a period of time, but I think some of it is pertinent at the end. I, I'll allow it, and I'll give it whatever way it's appropriate that the objections are we'll to play, play the whole thing. Okay. And again, by, by ruling on this, I, to get to Jenny Hill's point about about whether or not uh, out of probation violation hearing, I don't mean to suggest that that that, that I would necessarily admit it at, at the hearing, but really now it's just for purposes of this bail hearing. I'm not ruling on that that legal issue that has been raised by the I understand, Thank you. I'm notoriously bad at technology in Rona, so it's going to be much shorter than that. I think we need two more lights out to be able to. I mean, <laughs> Stop it! Leave him alone! <laughs> 
just been a couple hundred dollars in shock. I just bought the dogs!
as the court knows, it prefers that he be detained, understands, given the late motion to amend the state file, fully understand the, the um, court's intention, um, probably to, you know, do cash bail or, or EM. Uh, the state would ask, if not detention, at least some reasonable amount of cash bail. Um, if, and uh, as far as other conditions, I think a curfew, given this is evening, a curfew would be reasonable for the courts to impose uh, on the defendant. And again, uh, EM and during time, right now, at least EM. Do you have a proposed bail order? I do not. Uh, again, the state's preference is to keep bail as it is, but I don't know. And, and here, here's, here's, and I previously gave this to counsel that, that um, part of my concern is, is the fact that Mr. Mr. Paul has been detained for a period of time, and we were scheduled for a hearing today, and and uh, and, and I indicated to the state that if the state wanted to go forward with, with the amendment that I was going to take up the issue of bail, uh, and and uh, and and so. So, so we're, we're, we're doing this today. Um, I'm not just going to strictly order that the defendant be detained uh, at, at this point. Really, the, the, the question is, is what conditions, what amount of cash bail I can impose. But take it beyond that the request may be to either detained or that uh, some amount of cash bail or electronic monitoring be, be imposed. Do you have any other specific uh, requests in terms of conditions? Just a for you, Your Honor. I don't know if the court would order that he stay out of Central Square, but uh, certainly another condition that might avoid some problems. The, um, the other individuals seem to be connected to the restaurant across from Central Square, so um, you know that's part of the problem. First of all, I think that you know, if, if Mr. Webb is going to stand and offer proof uh, regarding the voices, I, I think I have to uh, be very clear there are three male voices I've heard on that recording. The two that are uh, consistently and, and uh, uh, I, I think rather loudly uh, saying things are not dependent. Uh, there, there's a, uh, the only thing that, that Mr. Webb uh, emphasized was uh, right before he stopped the video was uh, we need uh, I actually should halt here. My memory from, from, from earlier proceedings, I should have done so that just, just occurred to me. Mr. Paul, have you been able to hear the, the proceedings that have, that have taken place uh, today? Mostly. I couldn't really hear the voices on the video too much, but I've watched it several times. Okay. I just wanted to make sure, because I knew, I knew there was some hearing impairment issue. I wanted to make sure that, that, that uh, we do have devices available to help Mr. Paul if, if he needs them. I, Frankly, it didn't occur to me until I, I, I would like to have that for the next hearing if we may. Uh, if I don't have it today, I can live. Your Honor, Mr. Paul and I discussed that yesterday. I believe he's been able to follow things other than the, with the audio on the, on the video that was played. And, and like you said, we've both reviewed that several times. Please remind me the next, the next time I'll make sure that we have those, those devices. Thank you, thank you, Rob. Uh, Your Honor, I, I, I think that it is important to note there are three male voices that are heard uh, that are associated with Mr. Paul. He is not taunting. Uh, any of these people. Um, he is, um, the, the point where uh, Mr. Webb stopped and says as much as you can muster. Um, Mr. Paul is there. there, there's been an attack by these larger, uh, younger, more fit uh, individuals that, that came charging across the square uh, to attack. Uh, when the, the brief period, of, if the court believes that it can identify Mr. Paul from the video, uh, the brief period that he is on there, uh, he does not advance towards anyone. He does not raise anything uh, or a fist or anything else as if to strike anyone. Uh, the only thing he does is retreat from the younger attackers and uh, frankly much more fit attackers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're both in the 40s. It's okay. Uh, and when uh, Mr. Webb suggests that this is uh, uh, somehow a call uh, to saying we need more people as much as you can muster. It is a call for uh, some sort of riotous mob, I think is uh, sharp, it stands in sharp contrast to the facts. In fact, as you hear a voice of a young lady saying, give me a chance. Uh, 
to, to try and suggest that there is a risk uh, to Mr. Paul or to the community uh, is not supported by the video that he has just played. What is supported is that uh, the same video, which it is now my understanding was turned over to the King Police Department on June the 3rd, uh, that there has been no investigation, there has been no uh, charge against uh, any of the individuals who committed the crimes of destruction of physical evidence when the, uh, 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 the young man that was uh, from Washington, D.C. picks up a camera that Mr. Paul had dropped in the grass, then he smashed that camera. That man uh, committed the crime of disorderly conduct by walking cracker. Uh, he committed the crime of criminal threat. Additionally, on that video, there uh, is the crime committed against other individuals who were with Mr. Paul, specifically the assault that is shown on the video uh, with one or two individuals striking one of the other individuals uh, that were with Mr. Paul. Uh, it is not, uh, it does not support Mr. Paul as being uh, violent, Mr. Paul being uh, a danger to himself or the community. Uh, the uh, only thing that is uh, supported by that video is that there uh, are criminals who uh, remain uncharged and uninvestigated for actions they took on uh, the, the town commons that night. The state has specifically asked that the court uh, set some cash bail in this case. Uh, if the court is, in, I would submit to the court, cash is not necessary. Uh, it is my understanding that Mr. Paul has dutifully attended uh, every court proceeding uh, as called and required. Uh, other conditions can satisfy the other purposes of bail short of any cash. Should the court still believe that cash is important, I would uh, ask that the court be mindful of Mr. Paul's circumstances. That is that he, he works uh, for uh, an advocacy organization that is very similar to the Fully Informed Jury Association, NewHampshireJury.com. He does that as fundraising, I believe. Uh, additionally, the court, I, I think, is abundantly familiar with the Robin Hood. Uh, he also uh, participates in their activities, uh, including expired parking meters in town. Uh, in light of the work that he does, uh, a bail in anything with a comma is frankly, a might as well be no bail. Uh, I would submit to the court that it is much more appropriate should be required cash that it be uh, a few hundred dollars. Uh, additionally, Your Honor, Mr. Paul uh, believes he has a, an address certainly where he can reside. Um, that is at 173 Washington Street, apartment number nine uh, here in town. Uh, Mr. Paul would re uh, remain on probation until there is some resolution of this matter at least, uh, and the supervision that uh, probation and parole can offer is sufficient to address the other purposes of bail. Um, I, I think that just a, one of the note that I made when, uh, when watching the video, there's the one individual who is, is doing the most speaking and taunting, uh, talks about uh, you know, can you find my glasses? Mr. Paul only wears glasses to read, uh, and that's not uh, that's not him that was doing that. He's not the one who's making that the taunting noises uh, or, or statements. Uh, for all those reasons, Your Honor, um, and in light of the other allegations of, of violations of probation, uh, I would ask that the court release Mr. Paul on PR bail uh, with the direction to continue to report to probation if required, uh, and that he attend the proceeding on the 24th. Um, I wouldn't mind having protective orders against those four thugs. Uh, there are, Mr. Paul is, certainly has concerns about the other individuals in the, in the video. I don't know that the court has jurisdiction to address that. I can't really, can't really issue that, that kind of an order without, without them in front of me or a separate, a separate uh, filing to, to get that kind of a restraining order. So I'm not going to do that in the context of this, this video. I'll, I'll explain the jurisdictional problem to Mr. Paul later. Thank you. Uh, anything further from the state? No, ma'am.
Paul of Good Stand. I have given this matter, this matter of thought. I've reviewed the, the video. Uh, and in my view, um, again, uh, I think more will be said in probation violation about the hearing about the, the circumstances of this. But I'm satisfied that setting uh, cash bail in the amount of $500 uh, is appropriate in, in this case. Uh, and I, but you have a number of conditions I'm going to review uh, in terms of uh, pending a probation violation hearing in this case. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, find that you shall live at 173 Washington Street, apartment 9, uh, Keen Keen, and shall notify the court immediately in advance of any change back of residence. The court must prove of any change prior to such change taking place. You shall not travel outside of New Hampshire. You shall execute a waiver of extradition approved by the court. You shall refrain from possessing a firearm, destructive device, ammunition, or deadly weapon. You shall refrain from the use of alcohol and controlled drugs. Unless lawfully prescribed, you shall submit to random test to screen for consumption of alcohol or controlled drugs. Uh, and uh, further, you shall, um, I'm going to impose a curfew. You're going to be restricted to your residence from every day from 8 p.m. until 6 a.m. And you'll comply with all the terms of, of probation. Uh, and 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 let me say, if there's uh, this, the, just to just be clear, if there's if there's a single positive UA, I will revoke uh, I will revoke bail and detain you pending a uh, violation of probation hearing. In this case. Just one thing. Can yes. You, can you add if he, if he is released, he reports immediately. immediately yes. 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 Not, yes. Yes. We're not oftentimes in the loop if they post bail and then we won't know that he's Anything further this afternoon? Okay. Okay. And, and as I said, we'll have today the probation violation hearing will go forward on, on July twenty uh, fourth. Actually, if I could just see counsel very briefly at, at the bench following, following the hearing, we can go off the record. Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank Except for Garrett, because he's the only one speaking calmly. Uh, so, but my thoughts didn't go very far. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.